Hi, this is Miss Cindy from the Crown Point Community Library, and today I am bringing the library into your home. So if you've been following along, you know that it's summer reading, and we, our summer reading theme for this year is Tales and Tales, and we are combining the, our love of stories and our love of animals and putting those things together. So today I'm going to be bringing you our next of the Merlin's Missions, and Merlin, if you haven't been following along, Merlin is the wizard from the Magic Treehouse book series by Mary Pope Osborne. And Merlin's missions are STEM activities that um, are things that you can do at home uh, to learn about something new. So today we're gonna to be talking about dinosaurs. And the book that I have that I wanted to share with you is uh, Dinosaurs Before Dark. It's actually the very first book in the Magic Treehouse series. And, um, if you're, if you're familiar with these stories, you know that they are about two kids, Jack and Annie, who have a magical treehouse. And when they go into this treehouse, the treehouse takes off and um, ends up somewhere far away into another time period or another location. And they have a mission that they have to um, try to, to figure out in order to, to solve it and then get back to their home. So this one, Dinosaur Before, Dinosaurs Before Dark, is all about dinosaurs. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So hopefully you stopped by the library and you picked up your um, your make and take activity bag. And if you did, you have all the materials that you need to make your very own dinosaur tooth. And so this is my sample one that I have here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to read to you a little bit from this book. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to make this dinosaur tooth. All right, so I am actually jumping ahead in the book. So I'm jumping ahead to chapter seven. And uh, Jack and Annie are already, their, their tree has already touched down. It's in this land where all these dinosaurs are. And this chapter is called Ready, Set, Go. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack, to the tree house. They dashed down the hill together, through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the pterodon, and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the tree house. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off, but then the monster turned and he turned around. Duck, said Jack, and the two of them hunched down. After a long moment, they raised their heads and they peeked out again. Coast is clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack nothing happened. I wish, wait, you were looking at a picture of the, in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book. Jack groaned. Oh no, I left the book and my pack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. That book doesn't belong to us. Plus my notebook is in my pack with all my notes. Well, hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pterodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack lying on the ground. On top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses, all standing guard around nest. Where had they been? Did the fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. Ready? Set, go. He charged down the hill. He leaped to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound. Another and another. All the anatosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up to the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back and he was standing between Jack and the treehouse. Jack jumped behind the magnolia tree. His heart was beating so fast he could hardly think. He peeked out at the giant monster. The horrible looking creature was opening and closing his huge jaws. His teeth were as big as steak knives. Don't panic, think. Jack peered down at the valley. Good, the duck-billed dinosaurs were sticking close to their neck, to their, to their, to their nest. Jack looked back at the Tyrannosaurus. Good. The monster still still didn't seem to know he was there. Don't panic. Think. Think. Maybe there's information in the book. 
Jack opened the dinosaur book and he found the Tyrannosaurus Rex and he read, Tyrannosaurus Rex was the largest meat-eating land animal of, of all time. If it were alive today, it would eat a human in one bite. Great, that book was no help at all. Okay, he couldn't hide on the other side of the hill. The Anatosauruses might stampede. Okay, he couldn't run to the treehouse because the Tyrannosaurus might run faster. Okay, maybe he should just wait for the monster to leave. Jack peered around the tree. The Tyrannosaurus had wandered closer to the hill. Something caught Jack's eye. Annie was coming down the rope ladder. Was she nuts? What was she doing? Jack watched Annie hop off the ladder. She went straight to the pterodon. She was talking to him? She was flapping her arms? She pointed at Jack, at the sky, at the treehouse? She was nuts. Go back, go, go back up the tree, Jack whispered. Suddenly, Jack heard a roar. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was looking in his direction. So that's from Dinosaurs Before Dark by Mary Pope Osborne. And it is book one of the Magic Treehouse series. Okay, so here are all the pieces that you have. So the very first thing that you're going to do, you're going to take your styrofoam cup and you're going to just simply pour your sand into the cup. And you can use it all, or you could use part of it, but you want to try to fill up your cup. Now, I can't, if you notice, it's just kind of like when you go to the beach. If I wanted to try to make a mold, my sand doesn't stick together. So what am I going to have to do in order to make the sand moldable is I'm going to have to add water to it, correct? So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, I just added water to mine right in the bag. You don't want to make it too wet. You could even do it in a bowl. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it into the cup. Because you're playing with sand, you may want to, this might be a good project to do outside. All right, and see now you can see how I could just pack it down. Okay, so I don't know if you can see or not, but I have basically formed a, I put my wet sand in there and I, I kind of used my fingers and just dug down so that I had, it goes all the way down to the bottom into a point because there's a dinosaur tooth that's going to be pointy and it's going to kind of be shaped um, like a kind of like an upside down funnel, like a triangle. So here's the one that I had made. Now I need to go ahead and mix my plaster of Paris. So in this container, and I'm using this container because anything that I pour the plaster of Paris in, I do not want to dump that down my drain because it will clog the drain. So I want to use a container that I can throw away. So that's why I gave you these containers so that you can mix in there and you can just throw it away when you're finished. So I put two tablespoons of water into this container. You want to make sure that you're exact because in order for your plaster of Paris to set right, you have to have the right ingredients. So that's where the science comes in um, because it's very specific. So here's my two tablespoons of water. And then in this container, this is three tablespoons of uh, plaster of Paris and I've already measured that out for you so you're going to go ahead and put all of that into here now the other important thing is is you always add the plaster of Paris to the water instead of don't put the plaster of Paris in first and then try to add the water it'll be too clumpy and it won't work okay so I want to go ahead and add this in you want to kind of add it a little bit slowly and stir it around And I just want to mix it as I as I put it in. And if you wanted, if you have a plastic spoon at home and you would rather use a plastic spoon, you can use that too. I'll give you a coffee stirrer. But do not use a spoon from your kitchen because the plaster of Paris will harden and you won't be able to get it off. And remember, do not dump any of this down your drain. So I want to stir it around, make sure all my clumps are out. Right. And if I wait too long, it'll start to harden. So I don't want to, I don't want to move too slowly, but you can see how I have my plaster of Paris. And now I am just going to pour that into my mold.
and then throw those away. I'm going to let that set and I will be back to show you what it looks like. All right, so I am back and you can see that the plaster has set. So I know it's set when it's nice and hard to the touch. Um, it says that it should take at least 30 minutes. You might want to wait close to an hour, hour or have it put it outside where it'll dry faster. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to, to release the mold by turning your cup over and letting the sand out. Notice I did this on a paper plate. You might, again, want to do it outside. And then I just removed the sand from around my dinosaur tooth. Now you will also, you'll notice that the sand does stick to the, the plaster. And so what I did at that point is I set that aside to uh, let it dry. And then once it dries, the sand will, will scrape off a lot easier. And then you also, in your bag, you have this piece of sandpaper and you can use, so this is what it looks like after it dried, after the sand dried and I was able to brush it off. I brushed off as much as I could. And then you can use this piece of sandpaper to sand it down, to smooth it out. Um, and then you could even add paint to it or um, you could use fingernail polish and make it more shiny so it looks more like a tooth. But uh, you can kind of create it how you want. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, feel free to check out the library website, crownpointlibrary.org, to find more resources, more videos, and more fun things to do. I will see you next week for the next Merlin's Mission. Take care.